stretch my hands to thee. No other job I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, well shall I go. O most gracious and heavenly Father, we come now in the name of Jesus. Recognizing my heavenly Father that all that we are, all that we be is because of you. And Lord, as we come on this day, we thank you, Lord God, for granting us another opportunity. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for a new prayer. Thank you for a new worship. Thank you for a new month. Thank you for the new privilege that you've granted us. Thank you for a new honor to be able to call upon your name and to come into your presence. Thank you for a new gathering of your people who have come just to let you know we love you. And Lord, we just can't say it enough. We can't say it enough how much we love you. Because you do so much, my Heavenly Father. And you perform so much. Not because we're so good and not because we're so kind. But because you are God. And Lord, let your newness flow in the midst of your people this day. Send forth a new revelation unto us, Father. Send forth new insight unto us, my Heavenly Father. Help us eyes to see anew, our ears to hear anew. And Lord, as I come at this hour and in this moment, I ask my Heavenly Father that you would keep me in your keeping care. Use me as you see fit, Lord. For I am your vessel. I'm nothing without you. I can't live. I can't move. I can't have my being without you. And so, Father, I come once again saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
and thank God. First, give an honor to God, who is our Father, to Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Redeemer, and to the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, our teacher, and our guide, uh, to Reverend Walker, to our ministers of the gospel, to our ministries, to every member in the body of Christ. We count it all joy to be found once again in the house of the Lord, where prayers can be heard and mercy sure enough can be found, where all of God's children can come together and we can lift up the name of the Lord. Uh, this morning we'd like you to turn with us to two passages of Scripture, the Old Testament Scripture and the New Testament Scripture. The Lord has given us for our hearing and for our receipt on this day. The Old Testament Scripture is coming from Psalm 27 and verse 1. Psalm 27 and verse 1 be our Old Testament scripture. And then after we read that, we're going to move to the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 21 is where we're going to move to. But first let us look at Psalm 27 and verse 1. Psalm 27 and verse 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. And this is the word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then we're going to move to the New Testament book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. And we're going to read verses 23 and 24. Revelation chapter 21 and verses 23 and 24. When you have that, say glory to God. Glory to God. Revelation chapter 21, verses 23, 24 says this. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, for this day, uh, this first Sunday in February, uh, we want to discuss this and talk about this before the people of God. Be the Lord's light-led child of light. Be the Lord's light-led child of light. Uh, church, uh, the eternal design is founded on light. And we do know that from the very beginning, God separated light from darkness and laid the groundwork for men to walk in the light. He also said in his divine celestial and universal blueprint that the light would have dominion over darkness. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, it says this. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Then in Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 18, it declares these words. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light unto upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, 
The greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. However, after the beguilement in the Garden of Eden, mankind found himself walking in darkness instead of light. But thanks be to God, we are redeemed out of darkness and allowed not only to be light in the Lord, but also able to walk as children of light. We know this because in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, this is what it tells us. It says, for once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Live as those who are native born to the light. We gain a better understanding of what darkness and light are. We come to realize why God desires that we, his children, be the Lord's light led child of light. Look at darkness. Darkness is defined as dimness or obscurity. Obscurity or to be obscure means not discovered. It means not well known. It means hard to make out. It means dull. It means blurry. It means hazy. It means unclear. In the Hebrew language, it defines darkness as misery, as destruction, as death, as ignorance, as sorrow, and as wickedness. In the Greek language, darkness means shadiness. It means this when it says to be shady. It means suspect. It means untrustworthy. In other words, God does not desire, nor does he accept or acknowledge the children who walk in darkness because they are viewed as children who walk in ignorance, in sorrow, in destruction, and ultimately death. Children walking in darkness are blind, they are suspect, and they are untrustworthy trustworthy. But light on the other hand means to shine. It means to make manifest. Make manifest means to cause to be apparent, to cause to be clear, to cause to be plain, and to cause to be visible. Now in the Hebrew context, light means this. It means bright or clear. In the Greek context, it pertains to a star or a light with brightness. Say this again. In the Greek context, light pertains to a star or a light with brightness. In other words, the large light, the children of light, being the large starlight, pertains to us and to Jesus Christ. And so understand, when we talk about Starlights. When we talk about the light, it's not something that Young talks about. It's nothing that 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 that, that even if you want to talk about T.D. Jakes, call he doesn't say who is light. God declares who is light. He declares who is his star. He declares who are both because he is both those things. And he said that the disciples also are both. All right. Now notice this: the large light let children of light be the Lord's starlight, and it pertains to Jesus and his disciples. When we make reference to disciples, that means those of us who are believers, those of us who have been born again, those of us are blood washed, those of us who are saved and redeemed, we are born again Christians, following Jesus and Jesus, and because Jesus is light, because Jesus is a starlight, that means we too, in God's sight, are the same. Now we know that the light pertains to Jesus because in Matthew 2 and 2 it indicates that the wise men who traveled from afar said these words. They said, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. In John chapter 1 verse 4 and 5 it says this, in him was life and that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in darkness and the darkness has no way to overcome it. Then in Revelation 22 and 16 it records Jesus saying this, 
I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you and give you assurance of these things for the churches. I am the root, I am the source, I am the light, I am the offspring of David. I am the radiant, I am the bright and morning star. Now we know light pertains to those of us who are disciples of Christ. And we know it because of what the scripture tells us. In John chapter 8 verse 12, it records Jesus saying this. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Then we notice in scripture in John 12 and 46, once again, Jesus says this, I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes and trusts in me as Savior, all those who anchor their hope in me and rely on the truth of my message will not continue to live in darkness. And our children, this helps the disciple of Christ to understand that you can be a member of a church where God's people assemble, whether it's the Star of Bethlehem Baptist Church or whether it's another church that God has established that is God's house. But more importantly, you can be, and you are, the Lord's starlight, who is a shining light as a member of the body of Christ. Understand, when you're dealing with Jesus, you can't separate Jesus and light. You can't separate God and light. You can't separate the Holy Spirit and light because they all are light in God. The very presence of Jesus, the very presence of God, the very presence of the Holy Spirit, when they enter in darkness, light takes over. That's why Joshua talked about it when God came down into the tabernacle in the wilderness in the midst of the darkness. And Moses said, it's now you can return to your tent because you have seen the glory of God. The Bible says Joshua stayed at the tabernacle because he did not want to leave the presence of the light and glory of God. Look at this. How do we know we are God's starlight? How do we know we ought to be his shining light and members in the body of Christ? We know because of this. The child of God and disciples of Christ designation of being the Lord's shining starlight is confirmed in Matthew chapter 5 chapter and verses 14 through 16. This is what Jesus Christ said. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Throughout the generation, saints of God and faithful followers of Christ have testified to having the Lord's starlight status by saying these words. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It may not shine like yours, but the Lord gave it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Yeah. Children, we have to understand something. That to deny the representation of being the Lord's starlight is to deny the reservation and glory that the Lord grants to those who are his light-led children of light. To reject being a light child of the light is to choose being a lost child of the dark. If you deny the light, that means you're acquainted with the dark. That's why John said, with Jesus, he said, in the beginning was the word, the word with God. All things were made by him, and there was nothing made that was not made by him. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But unto those who he came, he allowed them to the give them the power to be called the children of God. It said that the word came and the light came and it said there was a man by the name of John the Baptist. He was not the light, but he came to make preparation for the one who was going to be coming, who was the light. They asked John the question, are you he? John said, I'm not him. He said, but he is coming. There's one coming mightier than I. 
whose shoes I won't be able to unlatch. And in the midst of it, as John spoke about Jesus, when Jesus came walking down and put down his carpenter's bag and his sack, went down to the Jordan to be baptized, as he came down to get baptized by his cousin, he walked into the water, and John the Baptist said, Look, behold, come in the Son of God, the Lamb of God, come in to take away the sins of this world. And John the Baptist told his cousin, I'm not worthy to baptize you. But Jesus said, suffer it to be so, John, to fulfill all righteousness. He didn't say he was doing it to fulfill what he wanted to do. He was fulfilling what God had sent him to do. And God had already said, born unto us, this day is a light, a light to the Gentiles. Isaiah said there were the people who were walking in darkness, but a light came into the midst of the people to rescue them from the darkness that they were in. Notice this, another situation. They're supported. We talk about don't deny the light because it can lead to you being lost in darkness. It's demonstrated in Matthew chapter 10, verse 33. This is what Jesus said again. But the one who denies and rejects me before men, that one I will also deny and re reject before my Father who is in heaven. This passage of scripture is a passage of scripture that led me to God. This is the passage of scripture that I constantly heard my pastor talk about every Sunday. This passage of scripture is the passage that he taught, that he said, and he gave during the revival in which I came to God. And in the same situation, as I sit there and try not to get up, try not to say anything, he said the same thing. If you deny me before me, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. And it's the one thing I understand. I did not want God to deny me. I want to be accepted by my God. I want to be able to be in the presence with my God, just like my mother, my fathers, and all those pilgrims that talked about I also know it's supported in John 3 and 19. This is what it says. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. In the midst of the time these days that we're living in, they're dark days. The people are following a dark land. They're walking in the darkness of the lie that is being perpetrated in the midst of everything in this world. Understanding that God said those who follow darkness, those who follow the lie, they shall reside in a place of darkness called the pit. So as we leave you today, there are two benefits to being the light-led child of light. Two benefits. The earthly bestowed benefit and the eternally bestowed benefit. There's benefits to being the light of God. There's benefits to being designated by God as a starlight child. There are benefits to being able to walk in somewhere and somebody see the light upon you and they say, it's something about you. It's something to know that when you walk in and God has shined his light upon you and the light is shining from you, others will recognize that God has a place in you, that God's face is looking upon you, that God's hand is with you. Yeah. Joseph could say it because when he went to Potiphar's house, he said, his God is with him. When he went into the prisoner, the, the warden said, his God is with him. There's a light upon the young man, there's something about him. When he went to Pharaoh's house, he said, the light is upon him. When Jesus took his disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration and he saw Jesus in all of his glory, they saw a light Three lights. Light surrounding Jesus. Light surrounding Moses. Light surrounding Elijah. And when Peter woke up and saw the light, all he could say, well, let's build three tabernacles. One for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. But then a voice came from heaven and clarified the whole situation. God said this, this is my beloved son. Hear him. He said, Elijah is all right. Moses is all right because I sent him to 
to prepare the way for the one who is Jesus Christ, who is the one who has been sent to be the light to bring you back to me. The earthly bestowal benefit is presented in Psalm 27, 1 through 6. This is what it says. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I feed? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall be confident and shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this, I will be confident. One thing have I desired. And I've done it of the Lord, that I will seek out, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his provision. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. That's the earthly benefit. But here's the eternally bestowed benefit. If you want to find it, just look in the book of Revelation. Chapter 21 and verses 21 through 24. This is what it says. When you are starlight, when you are light, when you walk in the light, when you are gleaming and glowing in the light of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. This is what you have for to look to look forward to. It says this. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each separate gate was a one single pearl. And the street of city was pure gold, like transparent crystal. He said, I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty is the omnipotent, the ruler of all. And the Lamb are his temple. In other words, you won't see a building like this in glory. You won't see a mega church building in glory. You won't see a Catholic cathedral in glory. You won't see a fine the, the divine structure in glory. Because this building, these buildings won't be there. None of them will be there. Not one church house, not one church building, not one ministry building, not one chapel, not one tabernacle, not one temple. None of those things built by the hands of man are going to be there. The only temple, the only one that you will see is God and Jesus Christ. But this is the wonderful thing here. Because in the midst of it all, it won't be this house, but there will be some house. The word says this, I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty, the omnipotent, the ruler of all, and the Lamb are his temple. And the city had no need of sun nor moon to give light. For the glory, the splendor, the radiance of God has illumined it. Won't be no sunshine that's on earth. Won't be no moonlight. Won't be no natural starlight. Won't no, be no artificial light. Won't be no illuminated light. Won't be no neon lights. Won't be no flashing lights. Because they won't be there. But listen to what he said. And the lamb is his lamp. And light. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's why the psalmist said, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But then it says this in verse 24. It says, The nations, that means to redeem people from the earth, will walk by his light. And the kings of the earth will bring into it their glory. That means God the light will be there. 
Jesus the light will be there. Those of us who are starlights and lights of God, upon whom God light shines, from whom God light come from, we will be there. Understand, if you're not a light, you can't be in the city. Because the city is going to be full of lights. The city is going to be full of starlights. Because the morning star of Jesus is the main light. And if you're not with him, you won't be in the light. So if you are there in the light, that means we are the Lord's starlight. We are the Lord's light. We are the one upon whom God has shined his light. And so this is our recommendation. This is our encouragement to every light of God, every starlight of God, any illumined light of God, every person in whom the light of God his face shines upon. This is what we encourage you to do. It's an old song from the church. It was a song that my daddy used to utter many a day. It's a song that the old deacon and deacons would say all the time. They would stand up in church when they were talking about the light of God and how the light of God was upon them. They would say these words, walk in the light, the beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shines bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. And so when you are in Jesus, this is what we say to you. This is what we say and communicate to you. These are the words of acknowledgement and recognition that we share to all who are here, who are children of light, who are the starlights of the starlight. Be Lord's light led child of light. Because this is the thing. In the midst of the dark, whenever we find ourselves in darkness, what do we need? All it takes is a little light. It don't take much. And I don't know what, if you raised in the country, you knew this. When it got dark, there were no street lights. The only time you may see that the street was bright, the road and the gravel was bright, was when the moon was shining at its brightest. But this is what I remember as a child. When the lights would go out and the man-made power was gone, my mama and would grab a lamp and it would light the lamp. And y'all, that lamp had coal oil in it. Somebody know what we're talking about. And they would take that coal oil lamp and they would light that lamp and they would put the lamp cover down upon it and they would turn up the flame. And the higher they turned up the flame, the brighter the light got. And it didn't matter how dark it was in the house. All you had to do was hold up the light. All you had to do was hold up the light. And whatever you were looking for, wherever you were going, when the light shined on, you could see. And in the midst of it all, we were walking sometimes in the country. We'll get a flashlight, and when we couldn't see, we put it down to see where we were going, to follow and make sure we didn't trip, trip on nothing, step on nothing that may have been in the road. But in the midst of it all, I remember words of a preacher who's in glory right now, young minister, H.B. Williams, who passed a new life came to the church where I was that was called True Life. In the midst of it all, he told the story. He said, I'm going to tell you all something. He said, when you grew out here in the country, there was something that had to be familiar with when you were in the country. Because you couldn't stay on the main road because there was danger on the main road. In other words, there were people who would drive by and try to grab you and take you to hang you, to shoot you, to kill you. Not gonna call your name, but we know what we're talking about. And he said, so son, what we have to do to get to the house, we can't go on that man-made road. We can't go on that gravel road. So we gotta take the headland that goes through the field. 
And he said, Daddy, how are we going to make it through and know where the headland is? We don't have a light to make it through the headland. And he said, son, God is giving me a light. He fixed it so I know the headland, even in the darkness, I know which way to go. Because God has put a light inside me where I can even see in the darkness. He said this. He said, notice, God fixed it so in the darkness, when your eyes stay in the darkness long enough, you can even see what's in the darkness. And he said, all you got to do, boy, all you do is follow me. He said, but dad, there might be some bumps, there might be some other things in the road. He said, follow me, son. And if you follow me, understand, I'm going to follow God. And God going to lead us both on the head thing. He's going to lead us to the house, and we'll get there safe. He said, if you get afraid and feel like you can't make your way, put your hand on my shoulder. Put your hand on my shoulder yeah. and just know this, that your father knows the way. Yeah. Put your hand on my shoulder and know this, that the father knows the way. And he said in the midst of it, when the daddy told him that, he put his hand on his shoulder and he said he noticed something. Even in the darkness, and they crossed the headland, the closer they got to home, the more light they saw. Because they could see the lights in the house. And so once they made it home, he wasn't worried about the darkness because in the midst of it all, God led them through the darkness and brought them home to the glorious light. That's what it is when you're a child of God. God made a promise in the midst of it all. I'll be the light that leads you to glory. And the reason why some say when you're going home, the reason why you see the light is because you're approaching glory. Yeah. And glory is the place where God is the light. Jesus is the light. And all of us who enter in the city are the lights of God. Yeah. Oh, shine on, starlight. Shine on, lights of God. Shine on. Don't deny the light that God has given you. Don't deny being the light that God made you to be. Because if you do, that is saying unto him, you're not a child of the light, you're a child of darkness. And the children of darkness shall not abide in the light. So children, be the Lord's light-led child of light. Not just a child of light, but a light-led child. I mean, Jesus who is the bright and morning star. And leading you who are a light and a child of light. Right. Give God a hand for the glory and the love that he's decided to give it to us. In the midst of it all, walk in the light, beautiful light, Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. The doors of the church open. Lord has called us, and he is the light that is shining to give us direction, lead us to his purpose. In all that we do, whenever things seem dark, God always says, he'll send this light. And in the midst of it all, that's why you hear him saying this scripture, during times of bereavement and grief, you'll hear the scripture mentioned. Weeping may endure for a night. There may be weeping in the darkness, but joy comes in the morning. Jesus is the joy. He's the light. If you don't know him today, this is your opportunity. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come by letter, Christian experience. If you're seeking to rededicate yourself to God, this is your time. If you're looking for a church home, this is your time. Matter of fact, we bear the name of the light. The star of Bethlehem Baptist Church. The light and the bread. The light and the bread. And so God has set us to be a light that sits on a hill. And we ought to do his works and bring glory to his name. Is there one today? If you're not looking for a church home, if you're looking for prayer, this is your time. Come to the light. 
come to the altar. God is always here, ready, willing, and able to shine a light on whatever that dark situation may be. He will bring you up out of it. He will lift you up out of it. And he will shine the light to give you direction and understanding in everything that you need to know and do. This is your time. This is your opportunity. Let the light of God shine down upon you. Will there be another? You, if you need prayer, just come on. We're going to deal with the prayer. Come on. Don't, don't be afraid to come to God. Don't ever be afraid to come to God. God wants us to come. God wants us to come. See that right there? That's my uncle song. That tells us he's your light. He's your lifter. He's all you need to be. This is your opportunity. Come forward. If you don't want to come forward, stand on your feet. You can stand on y'all because God sees you where you are. You can stand on your feet. You ain't got to be afraid. God might shine with heaven. God is a mighty God. He's able to put a spotlight on your situation. Doesn't matter what it is. God is able. God is able. God is able. sovereign God, that you are endless in your existence, knowing my heavenly Father, that you are the God is perfect in power, perfect in your purpose, purpose in everything and power in everything that you do. And Lord, as your children have gathered on this day, we come before you, asking my heavenly Father that you shine your light down upon us, shine your light down upon the situation in your child's and your children's lives. Whatever it may be that the enemy of darkness is attempting to bring upon them in their lives. We ask the Heavenly Father that you do your wonderful work. Lift up a standard against whatever it is, Father. Help them, Father God, in the midst of it all. Be the light that gives them guidance. Be the light that gives them insight. Be the light that gives them the healing and the help that they need. And Father, we know whatever it is, you say, cast our burdens upon you. But we have to remember to leave everything that we bring to you with you. But we know, Father God, you are here. We know that you're a heart fixer. We know that you're a mind regulator. We know that you're a doctor. We know that you're a physician. We know that you're a specialist. We know that you're a public defender. You're an attorney. You're everything that we need. We know, my Heavenly Father, that you're the assurance. You are the redemption. You are the, the rescue. You are the salvation. You are the consolation. You are the serenity. You are the peace. You are all that we need. And so, Father, we stand in the midst on this day. In your house of light. In your house of bread. Feed your people with what they need right now. Whatever it may be, my Heavenly Father. Whether it be physical, whether it be mental, whether it be spiritual, whatever it may be, touch right now. Remind my heavenly Father that nothing is impossible for you. Remind my heavenly Father that even before we ask you and come to you, you already know what we need. And while we are calling upon you, you've already responded. And so Father, if it's healing, move right now. If it's strength that is needed, move right now. If there's consolation that is needed, move right now. If it's peace that's needed, move right now. If it's clarity that is needed right now, move right now. And Father, we know in the midst of it all, 
Allow us, Father God, to feel your presence. Allow us, Father God, to hear your voice. Allow us, Father God, to see your word, your will, and your way. But Father God, give us that joy of knowing that as we prepare to leave and move from this altar, from this place, that all is well. That everything is all right. That it's already been sent. And that we're just waiting for it to be delivered in our sight. And so, Father, we pray for the bereaved family still. We pray for our sick and shut in still. We pray for the entire Star Bethlehem Baptist Church family still. Hold us, Father. Let us be who you would have us to be. Let us focus on what you would have us to focus on. Let it be about your works, your will, and your way. For only when we do that, Father God, are you going to be here. And so, Father, we thank you. We glorify you. But most of all, Father, we want to say this to you. That we love you from the bottom of our hearts. We can't say it enough. But to say it as your own saints would say it, as your own deacons and stewardesses and ushers would say it, as my uncles and grandparents and all the people of the God who I knew would say it, much obliged, Lord. Much obliged. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Give God a hand of praise, Jesus. At this time, we have an announcement. Yes, so we do. Good morning, everyone. My first announcement is that uh, we do have the tax statements ready. You need to see Deacon Marcus Dunn to pick those up this morning. Again, the tax statements are ready. You can pick them up from Deacon Dunn this morning. We want to invite all of you again to partake in our Love Fellowship dinner. It is going to be on February 16th. That's a Friday night. You can choose from the chicken breast or shrimp pasta, or the grilled steak. See any sisterhood member or chicken and all the details. If you look around the room, the sisterhood members are waving their hands in the air. So you can see who they are, so you can see who to get your tickets from. Uh, also, we are going to be having prayer making Bible study on Tuesday, starting at 6, you are invited to partake of that. And we want you all to have a wonderfully blessed And we also want to remind everyone uh, that on the fourth Sunday this month, uh, we'll be having a, a, a black history service honoring those pioneers of this generation. Uh, but we must know that it's not just those people who came from Africa back years ago. Uh, we're still here right now. And uh, many of us were still doing those things and advancing and achieving in the midst of all the difficulties in this world and society. And so we just want to celebrate that. We just want to give God the glory for that. And just remind everyone that uh, one of the, the honorees and one of the persons that will be here on the fourth Sunday, it'll be at 845 at regular time, is uh, Mayor Karen West Bruno. Uh, she's going to be one honoree. She will be here. And she's agreed to give a brief inspirational message uh, to the children, to all of us who are the culture of the achieved African-American people. And we're also going to have some others who have done wonderful work. Say amen. So we're looking at the possibility of having five people, four or five people here who have done some things, who are doing some things today, who are still doing things today, and are going to come and share with us as we remember what our people have done. And so we just want everyone to be aware of that. Uh, we just want to prepare for that. We're looking forward to that. That's been going on in that day. Amen. 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 Because understand this. We are all God's children. And God made all of us. And the wonderful thing I always say about this. God thought so much of us. That he put us melanin in our skin. And it's just something about it. That everybody tried to imitate us in some way, shape, form, or fashion. In the midst of it all. And even in the midst of this. When they want to say they want to look elegant. Look at everything else. You know what color they put on, don't you? Black kids. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let us all stand. And would you repeat after me? May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from the other. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forever. Let us all respond. Amen.